that was Eric, founder of Regis Entertainment. Eric, welcome to Heart to Heart. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I um, heard a lot about your website and to be part of it is something I'm looking forward to being, you know, you know, sharing my story with you. Great. Why don't you introduce yourself? Regis stands for Rich Elegant Jazz Sounds and was founded by me and I couldn't do it by myself so I had to have some assistance from my friend Rich Jackson, which is the R, myself, Eric Thomas, James Freeman, Jacques Howard, and John Floyd, those are the J's. But people could could easily remember Rich Elegant Jazz Sounds rather than our first names. That's great. <laughs> uh, so Eric, what inspired you to start Regis? A gentleman who I consider my father, he introduced me to John Coltrane, I was never the same. And I love jazz ever since. I would say starting from 18, that's when I start seriously trying to understand jazz more. Saw some of the greats as I um, was living in New York. New York is a mecca for jazz, besides New Orleans. And I would go to clubs like the Blue Note. I saw Nancy Wilson, I saw Stanley Clark, uh, Freddie Hubbard, Elvin Jones, you name it. I was getting exposed to a lot of it in New York. and. I just love it, and but when we started Regis, when I ended up in New Jersey, um, I found that New Jersey has a rich tradition of jazz, but it's in certain areas. Um, but in the area where we live, the primary um, source for jazz was uh, Princeton University, and McCarter Theater has a jazz series, but I think that's between May and June, June as well. But other than that, in this area, you have to go even further north of, north of here or wait for festivals like William Burrell Jazz Festival or some kind of festival. But on a monthly, daily basis, I didn't see a lot of things going on in, in this particular area. Right. And so I just felt that I, it's something I could do. As a teacher, I always tell my students, um, you have to create opportunities if someone doesn't give it to you but just be prepared for it when it comes. Mm -hmm. So um, I heard uh, of Scott Texier by accident. And when I heard Scott Texier, I was blown away because I've heard a lot of great jazz violinists, but not like him, because he doesn't play it like a violinist. He plays it like a saxophone. And I looked him up, wrote him an email. I never write anyone, so I wrote him, he wrote me back. So I found out that he was here on an artist visa mm -hmm. in New York City. So I went to see him. I, I got to see his last set and he recognized me. I described myself and I told him, do you mind coming to my school and playing for my students? Or do you play for schools? He said, yes. So I brought him to my school. The kids loved him. Mm -hmm. And then a friend of mine's uncle was looking for a jazz or some entertainment. Mm -hmm. And then I s said, well, maybe I approach him. And then I told him about Scott. I showed him a videotape of Scott and said, oh, yeah, put him on. So I um, arranged uh, for him to perform. I called everyone I knew. Mm -hmm. And um, Scott came down. I said, well, let me videotape it. I just wanted to make it a good production because I knew that he was going to be big one day yeah. and I would be the first one to know him before he got to certain heights in entertainment. And it went well. It was practically sold out. The owner asked me, and I thought I was done. The owner asked me, uh, would you, can you get somebody else? I said, sure, why not? But it was a lot of work for one person. Right. That's when I called Jacques, James, and Rich to join me. John came later, John Floyd came later. Mm -hmm. And I got Shami Royston. Shami was, a performing in um, New Brunswick uh -huh. and I approached her and she was very nice and she said yeah and I, then I started to learn about contracts, backline, things that I had never knew before because I'm just an elementary school fourth grade teacher uh -huh. dampening into jazz promotion right. and I started learning a lot as I was doing it yeah. but I also knew that after being going to different clubs what I would like to see. Right. So I want everyone to not only enjoy the artist, but enjoy the comfort of listening to the artist yeah. and looking at the artist. So one summer, I, um, I went to every jazz club in New York, some that I already attended before and some I had never been. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at 
not only how the artist was performing, but how are the people experiencing it. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that the artists had a big enough space so they can um, perform without being cramped. I want the audience to, to be able to not yeah. elbow someone or, oops, I didn't mean put my elbow in your soup. I didn't want any of that. I didn't want any of that. I want to make sure that they have a good experience. Yeah. Total. So I, um, our first show was at this place called the Big Easy. It's closed now, but it was in Trenton. Mm -hmm. And people loved it. Like I said, Scott was our first artist and people loved it. Mm -hmm. But I also had to find out how they hear about us. Mm -hmm. And people were coming from more or less the Princeton, Heightstown, East Windsor area than they were from Trenton. Mm -hmm. And so um, I approached Tavern on the Lake and we had to prove ourselves because, you know, jazz was something that they didn't have on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So again, I got Scott and I had to double up. I got his twin brother, Tony, mm -hmm. and it was packed. And mm -hmm. I said, hey, I can do this. Right. I can do this. And I started enjoying it more. Tavern on the Lake allowed me to um, um, change the atmosphere. Like I can hang up posters of famous jazz musicians. And it took off from there. And one of the things as a teacher, as like James is a teacher, Rich is a retired teacher, and John Floyd is a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, James came up with this idea, let's try to get some young people um, to perform during the two set, when an artist has a set, mm -hmm. a break. So James got this trumpet player, I can't remember his name. He saw this young man on the street playing, in, on the streets of on some street in Trenton, and he was playing his trumpet. Mm -hmm. James liked him, he performed for us, he was very good. Um, and then we started getting more young people involved. Um, what we always try to do is try to find an artist, or I mean a student who's playing the same a instrument as a headliner. Oh, okay. And the, it was a youth spotlight. Then we started getting older students, so we said call it Rising Star. Because okay. a lot of young, young people, I am no youth, I'm a, you know, so, right. so we just call it Rising Star. Right. And that was an audience pleaser too. And these young people, when they see the artist uh, performing, they can see, well, hey, if I keep this up, I can play as good as her, him, or them. Yeah. And unknown to me, um, the artists were letting the young people play with them. I didn't ask them to do that. Uh, our, we had these young people from Foundation Academy mm -hmm. High School. Um, I don't think, I think it's a high school. Um, uh, Kala Masudi, and she had three other students that played violin, mm -hmm. and they were performing during Scott's and Tony's um, break. Mm -hmm. Scott was so impressed with them, before he started his second set, he asked them to play, and their confidence went through the roof. It was an original song, and he let them play. Really nice. Same thing with drummer Rudy Royston. I had mm -hmm. three young drummers play during his dinner break, mm -hmm. and then at the very last song that he was performing, he let the kids play with his musicians. Rudy's a drummer, and he just guided the kids onto the drums, and like, wow, I'm playing with all these, wow. these top drummers, I mean, with these top musicians. Right. And they, they thank us for doing that. Absolutely. We had, um, and it's, we had Brandy uh, Younger who plays the harp, jazz mm -hmm. harp, and we had some young people playing the harp, and and they were they were just like, especially with children of color, African American children, they don't see um, a lot of people of color playing non conventional instruments, I guess, mm -hmm. like like the harp, oh, yeah. and um, we found some students who wanted to learn how to play, and they played, and they were great. That's good. You know, I know I'm talking a lot, but you started talking about jazz, you need to cut me off. No, <laughs> no that is wonderful to know <laughs> okay. how, how you're inspiring younger musicians as well. Yeah. You know, and giving mm. them the opportunity to play with established artists. Exactly. Like Scott and, you know, just hang out, you know, around mm -hmm. these venues. That That's a great opportunity for them. Yeah, it's a family atmosphere. The thing is, um, I want the students to um, see if someone else can do it, they can do it as well. Absolutely. So your initiatives through Regis Entertainment, uh, are already spreading awareness about jazz, not only in Trenton area, but also outside. So do you have any comments about that? Yes, uh, social media is a very powerful tool. Mm -hmm. I didn't get on Facebook until I started jazz. Uh, on our Facebook page, Regis Entertainment, we have over 3,000 people following us and liking us. Wow. Every day I get new likes or people share what I put on. Mm -hmm. it's, 
on the Facebook page, there's sections for videos where we'll promote what we've done as an organization. Mm -hmm. But I'll also put on um, video footage of famous artists, present, past, and upcoming, mm -hmm. and people will comment on it. Mm -hmm. So like every day, it's like I had to check and see what people are saying about what I put on. And I put on birthdays, like it was Sonny Stitch's birthday was this week. Um, Joshua Redman's birthday wasn't too long ago. Um, and then it's like a who's who mm -hmm. uh, in jazz. So I'm not only, because our, our events are, our season is from September through December and March through June. Mm -hmm. um, I learned the hard way in this area that I can't put on a show 12 months out of the year because mm -hmm. of the weather. They, we do have a Twitter account. We do have a um, Instagram account. Mm -hmm. I'm in charge of the Facebook account because it's easier for me to manage. I, 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 I Twitter I, that's and, and this, that's not me, yeah. but John handles that, Jacques handles that. Right. But Facebook, I like to put on something every day. Right. And then how many times you share it. Right. So that's spreading the, I mean, in addition to our own events that we do monthly. Now, I'll be honest with you, we could put a show on every week, but because we had to develop a, um, a audience in this area, mm -hmm. during the times where people weren't accustomed to having jazz, that took some work and it took some dedication because um, sometimes we weren't getting people coming. But once they start seeing the events, these shows that people have never heard of these artists, mm -hmm. but they say, wow, who is that? Who is this? Mm -hmm. They're awesome. Now people don't have to know the artist's name. If we have them on, they must be good. They must be good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's the reputation we have. Right. Um, there's not a shortage of talent, just a shortage of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I just want to create as many opportunities for rising jazz stars, as well as uh, established stars, as much as possible in this area. Um, one of the things that I would like to um, develop after, we've been doing this for like seven years now. I, I created a curriculum for a jazz camp, and all the artists that have performed for us mm -hmm. are willing to teach. Well, that's great. And spread their um, wisdom and experience. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing, I, that's one of my dreams and one of my goals, and actually it's not mine, but our goals. And another one is to have a jazz festival, jazz festival of our own mm -hmm. in this area. Mm -hmm. um, there's different attempts for different people, but I have some ideas that I think that will set us apart from other jazz festivals, which I won't diverge until right. tonight, till I get it, you know, comes a reality. I know. I can People wait. steal the ideas. <laughs> 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 yeah. no. But that's what I would like to do. A jazz right. camp and a jazz festival. festival. Right. Yeah. Featuring the artists that people may not know about. But again, by our dedication, our commitment, people know that whoever we have, even they never heard of them, they mm -hmm. must be good. And we won't put on anyone that's, I would say Scott and Shami and a, and a harmonica player and even Prene, mm -hmm. the first three jazz shows we got, they set a standard. Mm -hmm. And people even have to meet it, raise it, we can't lower it. Right. You mm -hmm. know. John Benitez plays ba bass. He was a Latin Grammy Award winning bassist. Mm -hmm. He had his sons who played the keyboards and trumps. Right. And it was like a family fair. Incredible shows, right. and we try to make sure that everyone knows that jazz is a universal music for everyone. Right. Um, and we tr also try to make sure that women get as much play as well, sure. so that it's not male dominated. These women are just as good, if not better, than a lot of these male musicians out here. Sure. But you don't get the opportunity, yeah. so I'm very cognizant of that. And we so we will make sure that we get our share of women who meet a high standard, just like the men do, and we make sure to get opportunities. Yeah. And that's what we try to do. And try to do in a way that people can appreciate the artists and the experience. Right. So you mentioned that uh, there is no shortage of talent, but no. there is a big shortage of opportunities. Right. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Like, uh, your um, thoughts? I, the way I like to present the artists um, is that, especially artists that have original music, uh -huh because I don't want people to think of jazz musicians as dinner background music. Mm -hmm. These artists, if they come see them, they are incredible. And if they just have an opportunity, and if you present them in a way where the audience doesn't think of them as background um, music, 
and I'm, that won't happen for established artists mm -hmm. who have a well who have who have uh, you have a name, mm -hmm. but artists who aren't well known, I don't want them, I don't want anyone thinking that they're, you know, that when you come to a Regis Entertainment show, people are there to hear the artists. They yes, they're going to eat, they're going to have something to drink, but they are there. They are not talking when those artists are performing, mm -hmm. and if we we take the art seriously, and that's why we have like a long list of people that want us to put on, but I always want to make sure I guarantee they have a full house. Mm -hmm. I want them to play to an empty house, and I want to make sure that it's worthwhile to experience because the art itself was developed here in this country, mm -hmm. and if we don't nurture it and keep it going on from one generation to the next, one, it's not going to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, club owners and venues don't look at them as are just sticking musicians up there to play while people eat and drink. Mm -hmm. They're missing out on some perhaps some great talent and innovators. Because right. some musicians, if you don't um, give them the, that kind of respect, they'll play, but they're not going to, they're just going to play just yeah. according to how you perceive they should be presenting to the audiences that's coming there. Right. But when you say, no, they're coming to see you do your thing mm -hmm. and perform and then they will give, they will put their all in it. Right. So do you talk to the venues before you, you know, set up your shows? Uh, yeah, I, um, I'm fortunate, like I, I'm always grateful to Tavern on the Lake because I learned the do's and don'ts when I was there. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example, when I, my first event at Tavern on the Lake, Scott and Tony were on the same level as the tables. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, we got to elevate them. Mm -hmm. So we got some portable stages, elevated, and you can see that everybody was listening to the artists. Nobody was like talking while they were playing. Yeah. If they were talking, they were talking softly, but they were focused on the music. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I've been in, in, in venues where band is playing by the window and no one's paying them any mind. Yeah. That's not going to be a Regis Entertainment experience. That's not going to be yeah. us. They're going to, the artists are going to be respected and people are going to have a great time listening to them. And um, No, this, will, this is what will differentiate you, Regis mm -hmm. Entertainment, from mm -hmm. others, you know? Right. Uh, <clears throat> we also try to do some other things, but I want people to come and find out. I'm not going to say because somebody else might take my idea. No, but they, no but that's they, fine. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the thing is, I want it to be a like a Broadway experience when it comes to the arts. These artists are that good. You right. may not know them, but uh, they're that good. Right. Eric, thank you very much for your uh, wonderful thoughts and comments about jazz uh, and good luck to Regis Entertainment. Thank you. Uh, could you say a final message for your audience? Sure. Uh, I like people to come visit our Facebook page, Regis Entertainment. They can see a lot of our past events and our upcoming events. Uh, we our season is usually March through June and September through December. You're going to find some up, uh, upcoming um, stars in jazz that you probably never heard of, but should. And that's our mission. Our mission is to try to spread jazz throughout this area. And we are not confined to just uh, the Princeton, uh, the East Windsor, Cranberry area. We're, we'll take jazz everywhere. It could be appreciated. And I tell anyone who wants to perform jazz, if you really truly believe in your art, then don't stop because people didn't think that we could develop an audience or following uh, seven years ago and we're still here and we're getting stronger and we're trying to move on to festivals and a jazz camp one day. Uh, I love the music and I'm not going to let it die down because it's an American art form and I want to be a part of that growth and expansion. So that was Regis Entertainment. Thank you so much, Alec. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. So hope you enjoyed this edition of Heart to Heart. There's more to come.